Getting started in DeFi can seem a little overwhelming when you first get into it. But in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know to get started and interact with these different dApps. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to do in order to start interacting with all these different decentralized applications. And watch my previous videos if you haven't already of all the different use cases that come with DeFi or decentralized finance. And a lot of you guys watching that are more beginners might only be on a centralized exchange and not actually know how to get involved in these new tokens and all of the world that DeFi has to offer. Now, the first thing that you guys are going to need is some sort of centralized exchange account and also to have funding already in that account. So something like Ethereum or Solana or Binance Smart Chain, whatever ecosystem you want to interact with is the token or the crypto that you're going to want to have. You're also going to need to get some wallet Chrome extensions. This is where you can get all of the different wallets that are your own custody in the crypto space. And I I highly recommend being very secure with your seed phrases, as well as potentially getting a hardware wallet such as a Ledger or a Trezor, which is a little USB stick that gives you additional security as you have to put in a pin code in order to access that crypto. I'm also going to go over understanding how there's all these different blockchain networks for each crypto, how to connect your wallet, sending, receiving, and then also go over some of the gas fees that you might experience as well as how to actually bridge blockchains. Once you have a centralized exchange, account and it's funded, you're now going to need a Chrome extension wallet. Now these wallets are how you interact with the different dApps. And what's a little confusing at first is you're going to need multiple wallets depending on which blockchains you want to interact with. Now a lot of the main blockchains can use just one wallet, which is called Rabi. There's also the alternative of MetaMask, but I personally think Rabi is a hundred times better. But if you want to interact in some other blockchain ecosystems, it's important to look up some guides before diving in because they might need a completely different wallet. Solana, for example, you're going to need Phantom. If you want to mess around on Cardano, maybe you need Vesper or Nami. If you want to go into the Cosmos ecosystem, you're going to need Kepler or Leap Wallet. And for Bitcoin, you're going to need Xverse or Unisat. So you'll see there's a lot of different types of Chrome extensions out there. And when you actually download a Chrome extension, it's going to give you the option of generating a seed phrase. And it's really important that you write these down. Personally, I scramble it in a way that I'll remember and keep it in a couple of different areas instead of just taking a picture of it with your phone, because God forbid someone's able to get the seed phrase, they're going to be able to get all of your funds. Another thing that I typically recommend is having multiple wallets where you can store your money in multiple different areas or seed phrases, just in case something does happen. And I like to have a hot wallet, which is what I use to interact within the ecosystem or within these different dApps. And then I'll have a cold wallet, which I have with a hardware wallet, for example, that I store a lot of my assets and don't touch. The reason you want to do this is because you have to give permission to these different dApps with your wallet. And sometimes there can be scams or different exploits or different rugs or what they call wallet drains. And if you didn't have your money separated or you weren't taking precautions, you could have all of your money taken away. There's also another Chrome extension that you can download called Pocket Universe. And I recommend this for beginners because it gives you different warning signs if it believes that it is some sort of scam. Once you have your wallet set up, and I'll go over that interface in a second here, you're going to be able to have money that you deposited from a centralized exchange, and you're going to be able to withdraw it to these different Chrome wallets. Another thing that you can do is if you already have money on some of these different Chrome wallets that aren't centralized exchanges, there's different apps out there such as Change Now or Simple Swap that make a lot of this bridging and swapping a lot easier. And I'll show some of that in this video. And the final note that I want to make before showing you guys some of this is that if you're interacting with a specific blockchain, it's important to have that chain's gas token. In order to transact in a specific ecosystem, such as Ethereum, for example, you're going to have to pay a little bit of Ethereum every time you want to make a transaction as the gas fee. If it's Binance Smart Chain, you're going to need BNB. If it's Cardano, you're going to need ADA. So it's one of those situations that if you're withdrawing from a centralized exchange, and you want to interact with the Solana ecosystem, for example, you're going to want to make sure you have Solana over on Coinbase, and that's what you're first going to withdraw. And then once you have Solana on that wallet, you can decide to spend some of that Solana on different tokens within that ecosystem, but you're always going to need to have a little bit to cover that gas. Now, let me show you guys what this actually looks like in real time. A lot of different wallets are Chrome extensions, which you can just look up on Google. And Rabi Wallet is my number one recommended wallet that 
it's going to allow you to interact with Binance Smart Chain, as well as all these other EVM chains out there. Now, a lot of people have used and recommend MetaMask, but anyone that's used Rabi knows that Rabi is about 10 times better. So if you're first getting started or you already have a MetaMask, I would actually download Rabi instead. When you download the wallet, it is going to ask you for a seed phrase or if you want to import one. If you already have a wallet, you can import it and now you can use that wallet. But if you don't have one, this is where you want to write down that seed phrase and make sure it's safe because if someone steals it or you lose it, you're out your money. A lot of times the interface on these wallets are pretty straightforward. You have a send button as well as a receive button. So if I ever want to receive crypto, I would simply hit receive. And this is where you have to be careful and make sure you're selecting the right chain. Just because it's Ethereum doesn't always mean it's on the Ethereum chain. Sometimes this token can be on base, for example, or it could be on Binance Smart Chain. It can be on 10, 15 different chains. And it's important to always double check. So for example, on this wallet, I might have Ethereum or 0.1 Ethereum. But as you notice, this is actually on the base chain. This isn't actually on Ethereum. So if I wanted to interact on Ethereum, I'm not going to be able to do so because I don't actually have any Ethereum in my wallet that's on the Ethereum network. It's all on the base network. So especially when you're sending to a centralized exchange or when you're withdrawing from a centralized exchange, you have to check that it is in fact the correct network. Network. In this situation, if I wanted to receive Ethereum and I wanted to receive Ethereum on the Ethereum network, I would simply type in Ethereum, I would click on this, and now I'd be able to copy my address. And now I'm going to be sending Ethereum tokens over to the Ethereum chain. Another thing to note here that's really nice when it comes to these Chrome extension wallets is when you copy your address on that top right corner, this address is for every single chain. So even though I want to send Ethereum to the Ethereum chain, if I make a, a mistake and it was actually on the base chain, it'll still go to this wallet. It's just it'll be on the base chain. Now that's not in the reverse if you're sending to a centralized exchange. And that's why you have to be very, very careful, especially in that route. Sending is pretty straightforward as well with these different wallets. You can hit send. And a lot of times you can select the token that you actually want to send. But in this, I just have Ethereum. So I can simply click, yes, I want to send Ethereum. I paste the address I want to send it in. And I make sure that whatever address I had gotten is on the base chain, especially if it's a centralized exchange. And if it's another wallet similar to Rabi, you don't have to worry as much because all the addresses are the same. Just be aware that it's going to be on base. One of the things that's really nice about Rabi is when you're looking at your assets, it'll show your assets from all of the different chains as well as all of these different smaller cryptos. So it's very easy to actually be able to keep track of what you have and what's on which chain. Now, let's say that you have this Ethereum and it's on the base chain, but in reality, you want to exchange that crypto with something else. Well, you have a couple of different options here. Option one is you can deposit that crypto into a centralized exchange, making sure that the chain is correct and accurate. And then on the centralized exchange, you can swap it to whatever you want. And then you can withdraw to whichever chain that you want to withdraw to. The second option is, is you can use some sort of platform such as Change Now or Simple Swap. There's also Rocket X Exchange where they actually do all of this process for you. So for example, when I type up Ethereum, you'll be able to see that there's all these different Ethereums on here. Even though it's the same token, it's on all these different chains. It's on Optimism, it's on Starknet, it's on Manta, it's on Arbitrum, it's absolutely everywhere. So in this example, let's say I had Ethereum on base, I can say, hey, I wanna swap this Ethereum on base and I wanna have, let's say, BNB over on Binance Smart Chain. What's really nice about a platform like this is yes, there are some fees involved, but it's really easy to go from any token such as Ethereum over to another token such as BNB and have that on two different chains. So I recommend using these platforms a lot. This is what I personally do if I'm not using some sort of centralized exchange. And this is probably going to be the easiest thing for you. Now recognize I'm not going to be able to buy Shiba Inu on here most likely. But if I wanted to buy something like Shiba Inu, and I know all the decentralized exchanges that have Shiba Inu are, let's say, on Uniswap on Ethereum, then I will simply try to get Ethereum over on the ETH chain. And that's when I can now go to Uniswap, a decentralized exchange, and switch that Ethereum over to Shiba Inu at that point in time. One of the important things I said, but I want to stress again, is if I want to interact in the Ethereum e 
ecosystem, I need to have regular Ethereum on the Ethereum ecosystem. So in this situation, I can very easily say, hey, I want to take my Ethereum on base and I want to exchange that for Ethereum over on the Ethereum chain. Then once I have that Ethereum on the Ethereum chain, that's when I can swap that to something like Shiba Inu, for example. But you always need a little bit of that main blockchain's token in order to cover the different gas fees. And you'll see here that there is a fee that they're taking every time you do this. So just be aware. The third option you can do is actually called bridging your funds. And because a lot of these tokens have support or compatibility on a lot of blockchains, sometimes you're going to find yourself needing to bridge between one chain and another. And if you don't want to use something like Change Now or Simple Swap, or if you don't want to use a centralized exchange, you're going to have to use some sort of bridge site. And right now, dbridge is actually the best. And if you watch my airdrop guide video, you'll know you can farm airdrops on dApps that haven't released their token yet. And dbridge is one of them. Over on dbridge, it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll have, let's say, Ethereum on base, which you'll be able to see this little logo here is the Ethereum on base. And then I'll be able to say, hey, I want to have this Ethereum on the actual main Ethereum chain. And it'll take my Ethereum on base. And after the transaction confirms, I'm now going to have that Ethereum over on ETH. And there are a ton of different options here. You have Polygon, you have BNB, you have Arbitrum, you have AVAX, you have Solana, you have a bunch of different options. And when you do this, you're actually racking up points and potentially getting an airdrop on top of it. So in a situation like this, I would probably use something like Dbridge if I wanted to take my Ethereum off of base and onto Ethereum, simply because some of my fees are going to be offset by their future airdrop most likely. Just to go over everything quickly one more time, you'll have some sort of centralized exchange account where you have your original funding. You have a Chrome extension wallet. You're going to need different wallets for different chains. You're going to be able to deposit that crypto over into that Chrome extension wallet making sure that those chains are accurate. Then with this wallet, you're going to be able to connect to different sites and interact with them. And you have to make sure that you have that main token of that blockchain in order to handle the gas fees. And if you're ever on the wrong chain, you can either send it back to a centralized exchange and then withdraw again on the right chain. You can use something like Change Now or Simple Swap, or you can use a bridging dApp such as Dbridge in order to change that bridge. And that pretty much wraps up how to get started. <music>